Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Now onwards, we are resuming our NMR series again. And uh, in this video, I am going to discuss about the origin of shielding in NMR. And NMR, as you know, nuclear magnetic resonance. And with the term shielding, you are very much familiar. And it is represented by that symbol sigma. And it is very important factor to determine the chemical shift value for a given nuclei. So here we are going to discuss about the origin of shielding in NMR, right? So let's start with the topic. Here is the sigma and sigma is the contribution of these terms, right? So here sigma local, sigma neighboring and sigma solvent. So these are the terms which contributes to shielding in NMR and here we are going to discuss these terms separately and uh, contributing terms towards these sigma local, sigma neighboring and sigma solvent. So sigma local is represented as sigma D local plus sigma P local, right? And sigma neighboring is determined as sigma isotropic or sigma anisotropic or sigma ring current or any of the two may be collectively works there. And the last term is sigma solvent. We are going to discuss these terms one by one. So here we are going to discuss in this video sigma local and what is sigma d local plus sigma p local and how they are going to be calculated and which of the parameters are contributing towards these terms. Right. And in the next video we are going to discuss the sigma neighboring or sigma isotropic, anisotropic or ring current and then Sigma solvent we have already discussed in my previous video. So let's start with the sigma local. So here sigma local is the sum of sigma d local plus sigma p local. So here d and p what does it signifies? d stands for diamagnetic and p stands for paramagnetic. Right. First I will just tell you what is the term local. So the local contribution essentially comes from the electrons of the atoms that contains the nucleus of interest and here i'll just show you a picture here we are having the nucleus of interest and it is surrounded by the electrons which are revolving and rotating on its on axis around this nucleus of interest so it is having nuclear magnetic moment in the upward direction whereas this electron is having nuclear magnetic moment in the opposite direction right this we have discussed in my earlier videos so here i am not going into that you can go and check that video and here i just also collected one point for the beginners those who are not very much aware about such type of terms now here i have written this statement a magnetic field induces, this is the magne, applied magnetic field, this induces the electronic circulation about this nucleus in a plane perpendicular to this applied magnetic field. So this is important. I know most of you are very much aware about this fact but this is just for the beginners, right? So sigma d, first we are going to discuss these terms one by one and how we are going to calculate or on which parameters these terms are dependent. So here is the sigma d local and d stands for diamagnetic and uh, this diamagnetic is here I'll just explain this is in the upward direction and this is in the opposite direction. So this is diamagnetic. So this diamagnetic shielding is a first order term which can be calculated from the ground electronic state. It means we come to know the, the wave function of the ground state only for the given nuclei okay, or the nuclei of interest. In other words, we can say the diamagnetic contribution arises from additional fields 
that oppose the applied magnetic field and hence shield the nucleus. So here what you see this is the induced field or induced magnetic field which is caused by the electrons which are revolving about this nucleus and in this way this is the applied external magnetic field which is supposed that the bare nucleus experience fine but we are not having the case of bare nucleus it is always surrounded by the electrons and those electrons are revolving about this nucleus and they generate a secondary magnetic field which is in the opposite direction to the applied external magnetic field so in this way this nucleus experience a little lesser magnetic field than the applied external magnetic field so here in this way because of this effect and this is known as effective magnetic field experienced by the nucleus so as uh, this effective magnetic field is lesser than the applied magnetic field so this nucleus is said to be shielded if it is shielded then this is resonate at a field side or low frequency side about these terms low frequency and of field how they are interrelated this i have already explained in one of my previous videos if you are a beginner and you are having any confusion so you can go and check that video in which terms used in the nmr are explained in detailed manner okay if this is shielded then this is positive okay this term sigma d is positive so b effective is equal to b naught 1 minus sigma and here what we said here sigma is the positive term if it is positive then we are having effective b effective less than the b naught if it is negative then we are having b effective is greater than the b naught so here since it is shielding and uh, it experience lesser applied external magnetic field than the applied external magnetic field so this term is positive so this means like that here if this is so then this nucleus is shielded so shielded means it is resonating at high field side or low frequency side okay so this this is low frequency and high field so this is the region where it, this type of nucleus will be resonates the next thing which we can explain about this sigma d that the magnitude of this sigma d depends on the electron density close to the nucleus here i'll just give you an example so here we are having different halogen atoms attached to the methyl group so we are having the chemical shift value uh, like this okay so it basically depends on the electron density about the nuclear and uh, for the atoms sigma d can be calculated by the lamps formula so here is the lamps formula and here are the meaning of the terms which we are used in this formula to calculate the sigma d value okay so mu naught is the vacuum permeability r is the distance of the electron from the nucleus and this and this angle bracket 1 upon r r is the distance this shows the expectation value and if you are confusing with the expectation value so don't get bother about this term this is given in the quantum mechanics and we are going to discuss after this uh, nmr series okay so that is very simple term actually when we are going to discuss the quantum mechanics then i will explain this so here is the expectation value this sigma d value is about 20 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 for one electron and this defines the range of chemical shift for proton so this is important why proton nmr is having a range of 20 ppm and this value is reported in one of the book i will give the reference of that book in the description box now we are going to discuss about the sigma p sigma p is the second order perturbation term 
that requires a knowledge of excited state wave function and energy of excited state so we are having ground state as well as excited state and uh, the sigma d value is calculated from the ground state and uh, this sigma p p stands for paramagnetic the sigma p is calculated by the knowledge of excited state wave function okay so for this sigma p we need to have the knowledge of excited state wave function and energy of excited state as well as continuum of electronic states above the ionization limit in other words if you are scared about these terms then it can also be explained in some simple terms right so in simple words the paramagnetic contribution arises from additional fields that reinforce the applied magnetic field means it is opposing and that reinforce this applied external magnetic field. and as i said earlier if it reinforces it means the b effective is greater than this b naught and when it comes when this sigma p is negative the b effective is equal to b naught 1 minus sigma as I told you earlier in my earlier slide, so if sigma is positive, then B effective is greater than the B naught. And if it is so, then this resonates at low field value or high frequency site, or this nucleus is said to be D shielded. It further simplifies and it can also be understood in this term. So, sigma P local actually corrects the fact that the electron in a molecule are not disposed with spherical symmetry about the nucleus in question so actually the nucleus which we are going to record in the nmr so that is not spherically symmetric this corrects that if it is not spherically symmetric then this sigma p term is very important in that case so here you can understand this the presence of p and d electrons near the nucleus is an important factor in determining the magnitude of sigma p so for hydrogen atom and for molecules with linear symmetry this sigma p local is almost negligible but for all other nuclei sigma p turns out to be dominant term and sigma p can be as large as 10,000 ppm for some nuclei. One more important point about this sigma p. Sigma p is also termed as temperature independent paramagnetic term. I, as I told you earlier that applied external magnetic field is in g direction. And this sigma p is also enforced that applied external magnetic field. So in that way that is paramagnetic term. So and it is termed as temperature independent because this distinguish the term uh, temperature dependent paramagnetism which is result from the unpaired electron so this is all about the sigma d local and sigma p local all about this sigma local term okay which contributes towards the total sigma and in the next video we are going to discuss about the sigma neighboring which is the term based on isotropic, anisotropic and ring current which is very important and many of the students find it difficult to understand. I hope you understand this video and find it useful for you. So if you find this video useful for you, so please subscribe my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.